So let's go over a prickly subject today, which is repotting some cacti. I'm way overdue to repotting some of my cacti, and it's partially because they're really not as needy as typical houseplants, and they don't need that much maintenance, but also because repotting is a little bit more precarious when you're talking about cacti with spines. Now, if you don't wanna walk away looking like a porcupine or a pincushion, then you may want to take some extra precautionary measures. Now, you really don't need much fancy equipment when it comes to repotting your cactus, and I have way more than I need here, but that's just for the purpose of showing you how I'm gonna do this and figuring it out as I go. Now, at the very least, I would recommend a pair of gloves, and gloves that probably have some rubber or even leather at the fingertips, if you're, because if you're gonna use like cloth gloves, then you'll likely still get pricked. So anything that has a little bit more robust in the fingertips and on the palm. Then you can have a lot of recycled stuff. So I actually got most of this stuff from people sending me packages in the mail. So stuff like newspaper or flexible cardboard or the dreaded styrofoam. I mean, these are actually uh, packing peanuts that are the carbohydrate kind that I got at the Webby Awards. So if you remember that update video, but uh, yeah, I didn't eat all of them. Oh, oh of, packing peanuts. You know what though? These are the carbohydrate kind. Oh yeah. Oh. Maybe not. <laughs> no, I did. No, try that out. It tastes just like, mm. it tastes like pasta. Kidding, I didn't eat any of them, but these are ones that will dissolve. You don't actually need to throw them away. You can compost them, but I saved them because they're very good when you're repotting your cactus, which we'll go over. Now, some folks also use tongs when it comes to repotting their cacti, but I don't always like to use these and I'll show you why a little bit later. Now, as you can see from the selection I have here of these two guys, um, they, you know, cacti come in many different shapes and sizes. Some of them have a small spine, some of them have large spines, some of them even come spineless, so obviously those are a lot easier to pot up. Now, this golden barrel cactus has these long spines that really protrude outwards. And this is one that I wouldn't recommend using tongs because as you're applying the pressure of the tongs on the spines, you could actually crack the spines. Uh, and you don't wanna do that because then your cactus is going to look a little bare in some parts. So if you want to use these, I would recommend using them on a cactus like this which has the spines that kind of recurve backwards, you know, towards the flesh of the stem. So that's going to be a lot easier to pick up if you could see this. But really, I mean, the principal way that I'm going to repot some of these cacti today are with the glamorous cardboard newspaper and even packing peanut methods. But before I get to this, I also want to show you some of the beautiful substrates that I have here that I'm going to be using to repot my cacti. Now I have this one right over here and this is actually made by Bonsai Jack. It's, it has a, a lot of gritty material in here. Some uh, perlite that I actually added to this. So this is perlite, it's uh, a puffed volcanic stone. And then I have some really beautiful sand right here that could actually serve as a top dressing or you could actually mix it into your cacti or succulent mix. Some black lava stones. Very nice. Also, there's red lava stones as well. And then I have a mixture here with some clay and some other types of substrates. And then of course, you could always go with a cacti and succulent mix, which is totally fine. Um, so many different brands out here. This is the Espoma brand. And you'll see that it actually has a nice PD based mix with a little bit more uh, perlite as well. So you could see it's a very nice airy mixture. And, uh, and you can even mix this in with some of your other mixtures if you want. You can really get um, creative with it. It's, it's what you want. And typically, if I have a cactus that has sensitive roots, I'm probably not going to be using a peatier mixture for it. I want something that's a little bit more well draining because if it has sensitive roots and it starts to rot more easily, or if it's like a, a cactus that rests on the surface of the substrate 
and you don't want that substrate holding too much water up top because then it'll start to rot the stem of the cactus, then you're going to want to use something that's a little bit of a, a grittier mix. And that's what I'm actually going to be using today. So without further ado, let's get started on repotting this up. I'm gonna obviously wear my gloves because I don't wanna be walking away like a pin cushion, like I said. Okay, so this one we have here has a little bit more, as I mentioned, recurved spines. So you'll see how the spines are not poking outwards like my golden barrel cactus. I mean, some of them are, but most of them are hugging the body and protecting that stem body of, of this cactus. So I'm gonna move this up here because when I like to pull these out, and I don't even think I need tongs for this. I think I could probably just use these gloves. There you go. Very nice. I love these planter pots, by the way, because they have a lot of good aeration on the bottom. So I usually typically save these and reuse these. All right, so again, look at this nice airy mixture. This is probably 50 to 60% perlite, and then the rest of it is just a regular potting medium. I'm just gonna put that right out here and mix that in with my current substrate. And I'm just doing this so I could inspect the roots. And really not much of repotting a cactus is too different from repotting another plant, except that you have to take those extra precautions not to get poked. Okay, this is nice. And yeah, and the roots look pretty good. I'm not going to have to clear all this out, but they look very nice. And I'm just going to mix some of that current cacti soil that the grower had and just mix that in there and you'll see much more perlite, nice gritty mixture. This is actually a very attractive mixture. I really love adding some of that extra grit. I just think it's, um, yeah, it just makes it look a lo little bit more beautiful too. So this is pretty much the same size of the, the nursery pot that I had it in and I'm not going to go much bigger. I really liked this planter that I picked up at Chelsea Garden Center. It has like these little divots and it has this kind of like slate greenish color, bluish color in with uh, brown. And I picked this out for this one because I think that it has a little bit more of that coloration. I like the matchy matchy sometimes when it goes to planter. So and I'm just gonna use my spoon and add some of this mixture in here. About one or one to one and a half, two inches down below, whatever your plant can handle. Create a little divot. And I'm just gonna drop that in. You see, I haven't even had to use the tongs on this. I'd rather not because I think I could be a little bit more gentle with my, with my fingers. And because I'm using these gloves that have rubber on the fingertips and on the palms, then I feel you know, protected already. The other thing that I like about using a grittier mixture on top and I mentioned this before, but if the stem of the cactus is resting on top of a mixture that maintains and holds the water at the top, then it's gonna be sitting in that, that wet substrate. And that's not always good for the plant. Especially if you don't have that airflow in your house, it's not going to dry out really readily. I could have probably dropped it a little bit further down into this pot, or if this pot was just an inch or two taller, it probably would have been ideal, but we'll make do. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now I really like the look of this. I'm gonna take some of this beautiful stone. I love this because it brings in some grays and it has red lava stone. It has some reds and some blues. And I'm just going to line the top of this. That way it's not resting on, again, any, any kind of substrate because I do have some peat mixture in there. 
And I like this too because when I wet this stone, it actually becomes a little slightly darker color. And then as it dries out, it goes back into the pastel shades. So if you want to be a little bit more precise in your movements and you don't have any mobility in your fingers when they have gloves on, then uh, you could use a pair of tongs. And I have this long pair of tongs that I ended up picking up for my uh, biopod and these have been so handy. You could also use them in terrariums if you're trying to take some plants out or kind of arranging some of the substrate in there. But this is great because you could get uh, really close to the cactus without getting spiked, especially if you don't can't find your gloves and you could just go in there with the, the tongs and move the rocks around or high grade and take a little rock out and then put it in there. If you want some more of the blue stones, you could grab it very easily and just add those in there. And there you go, that one is potted up and we're going to move on to the next one. All right, so this is a, a golden barrel cactus and I got this as a gift and I was like, oh gosh, what am I gonna do with this one? Um, but it's, uh, it's in a too small of a, a planter pot. So this, the spines are actually coming out from the sides of this planter pot which is a little precarious and it has grown um, a bit bigger than this, this planter. So what I'm gonna do is give it this wider planter because this will allow the spines to grow outwards. It's not too much larger than this one. It's not as, um, it's still the same depth pretty much as this one. So I don't think any of the roots are coming out. We will see after I get this out. But this is one that I've been pushing off for quite some time. So what I'm going to try is just to put some of these packing peanuts around these spines. And I'm not gonna stick them on too much. Now, I got this idea because when I was in Singapore, I saw these huge cactus, these huge cacti and euphorbia that also have spines. And they were massive. They were probably like four feet, five feet, six feet tall and they were moving them on trucks and they had styrofoam all the way around. And I was like, that's a really great idea because here the spines actually um, just go into the styrofoam. They protect your fingers or your arms if you're going to have to hoof those to a house or upstairs. And, uh, and that's gonna be much easier on the spine so you don't break them. Because again, if you use those tongs, and that pressure is applying against those tongs, you're just going to, to crack those spines. So um, I could use something like this as well, like a piece of cardboard, but you might have a little bit more grip with uh, some newspaper as well. So, I mean, I haven't done this before with my golden barrel cactus, but we'll see how easy it is. I mean, this seems like it's coming out very easily. Yeah, okay, yeah, very, very easy. So look at that. I was dreading this moment because I was like putting this off for so long, but so far so good. But it is really dry and it's primarily peat mixture. You can see there's not as much perlite in this. And I, I definitely wanna start breaking up some of this soil clog down here because it's not going to get water to its roots because it's just all crusted up. So I'm just gonna be very delicate here and just start teasing away some of this soil. Let's move it around. It looks kind of funny with the styrofoam packing peanuts on there. So it kind of looks like the hair salon when, when you have the old Oh hair yeah. Hair. Oh yeah, when they have the rollers on yeah. the hair. You just mentioned that. Yeah. Sandra says that it looks like the hair salon when somebody goes and gets a, a, a perm and they get the curls. It's really funny. Okay, I'm gonna be just working out some of these roots. Now I am damaging some of these roots inevitably. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you've damaged some of the roots as you're kind of teasing away some of the clogged soil, then you're not going to wanna water this right away because you might actually end up overwatering the plant because not all the roots are working. So I would just say a little mist and then uh, giving it a good water in a few days should be fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some of that 
old soil out. I'll take some of that old soil and mix that in. It's very dusty, actually, you know, that some of the older soil. So I'll be using some of that in this new one in here, putting about an inch down below, making a little divot, and lowering this guy in there. All right, that's great. Now, what you can do is with these guys is take a spine and just grab it. So if you want to position it right in the middle so it's not leaning. And that's just delicate enough so that you're not pulling off a spine. And I'm just going to work my spoon around and I'll probably end up using these after that to push down some of this substrate. And you do want to make sure that you, you're pushing down the substrate, which is a bit of a challenge with these spines, so that you, um, you get some of the soil down there so it's not like there's not like a big air pocket. And again, I picked this planter for this plant because it had a wider lip, meaning it kind of goes out like this. So as it goes out like this, and, uh, it, it's a little less constraining for this plant. And if you've ever seen full-size golden barrel cacti, I mean, they're very popular and they're, they're unfortunately endangered in the wild, but they are extremely popular at botanic gardens. And when I was in Nang Nuk Botanic Gardens in Thailand, if you saw that episode, I'll link to it above and also I'll put it in the description, but wow, they had some pretty impressive golden barrel cacti displays. Okay, so now I'm going to use these tongs and I'm gonna see if I could push them down without damaging too many of the spines. And I could actually start taking these off because I don't think I'm going to poke myself. And actually these gloves are pretty good. I also have gloves that um, don't fit so tightly to my hands and they're, they, they're great gloves. I think they're called, uh, they're by mud but um, they are, because they don't fit closely to my hands, I find that sometimes they could get in the way. They're great for like outdoor gardening, but some more precision indoor gardening like this could require you to have full nimble fingers. Yeah, I'm just gonna break out some of those clogs of uh, peat that was, got too dry. That's the, the, the challenge I wouldn't say the problem, but the challenge with peat is that if you let it dry out for too long, it's very hard to re-wet. And using peat for your cacti and succulents, because you're not wetting them or watering them regularly, then it can dry out. And then you don't know whether the cacti is getting all the water. Now one of the spines broke off. So you can see that right here. So yeah, you definitely don't want to be getting that into your finger. I'm just gonna put that off to the side. That looks really nice. And so what I'm going to do now is I think add some of this sand. I think this is made a little bit more from, from granite, horticultural sand. Ooh, it's all over the place. You hit one of those spines and the, the sand goes flying in the other direction. I'm just gonna put that around the edges. And again, that way, the body of this cactus is not going to be resting against any kind of substrate that doesn't drain. You want something that actually drains. And then I'm going to push this in, take some of the soil out. and then just put that in here. There you go, I mean, I think that is just about it. No spines in my fingers. And I think both of these actually turned out all right. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode and you just see that it's actually not that hard in order to be able to 
plant up your cacti, all you need is a little bit of an extra helping hand. If you didn't hear yet, we just released Houseplant Basics, which is an introductory mini course for beginner houseplant enthusiasts. The video-based course is set up to be both concise and comprehensive, and it serves as a perfect primer for our Houseplant Masterclass, which is a month-long course on houseplant care, cultivation, and more. You can find out more information on both courses at homesteadbrooklyn.com or search for the courses in the description below.